Ketamine fails to live up to expectations in treatment-resistant depression. In fact, when you actually look at the effect sizes, they're very small, meaning it's not very effective for those suffering with TRD. The other thing that makes ketamine interpretation very difficult is the studies, even when blinded, aren't really blinded. Patients know they're getting a dissociative anesthetic. There's no way around this. So it makes it very hard to interpret the very large results you'll get when somebody's getting ketamine versus, say, a saline infusion. However, when you replace that saline infusion with something like midazolam, the large effect that you see goes away. It becomes a much smaller overall effect. And something that nobody is talking about right now is the potential increased risk of suicidality when the medication is withdrawn or stopped. This is something that isn't talked about by manufacturers. This isn't talked about by many healthcare providers and really should be part of our thinking when we're prescribing this medication. Now, I'm not saying that ketamine has no place in psychiatry. There are many patients who are helped by it in a meaningful way. But I think we need to start thinking a little bit more critically about where this medication fits in and how to use it most effectively, understanding it is not the panacea we all thought it might be.